yeah this was this is what we were like uh, discussing yesterday this was the lecture plan so yesterday we discussed this topics atomics how to obtain atomic spectrum then we saw the difference between discrete and continuous spectrum absorption and emission spectrum and finally we saw these fraunhofer line let's start with hydrogen spectral lines and we will start with bamer series so when we say series these are basically a collection of spectral lines of a typical wavelength they are given particular name in this case we are saying it is bamer series so what is bamer series it was observed in 1885 by jj bamer when he uh, used uh, discharge tube which was filled with hydrogen atoms or hydrogen gas rarefied hydrogen gas then he observed these uh, bamer series and the, they fall in visible region and that's why uh, it is easier to get them get that though, i mean it is easier to observe them in laboratory and these all these series see again i'm repeating this when we say series it is not single spectral line it is group of all the spectral lines there are multiple spectral lines which are grouped together due to a, a specific property we will come to that point soon this series is made up of different different spectral lines of different wavelengths and they have a specific uh, specific formula this is the formula any spectral line in bamer series has wavelength which is given by this formula it always no matter which line you observe for bamer series it always satisfies this equation lambda is wavelength of one of the spectral lines in bamer series this r is a constant and what is that r called as rydberg's constant so this is rydberg's constant and for bamer series we have this particular relation so for bamer series n has it assumes integer value which is greater than 2 so n can be 3 it can be 4 it can be 5 and all integers are possible up to infinity so any n can assume any integer value which is greater than 2 so there are these two conditions that n should satisfy and now no matter what value of n you consider as far as they satisfy these two conditions when you plug in here for example you could plug n as 3 and obtain one value of 1 by lambda let me call that as lambda 3 Why lambda three? Because I'm plugging in n as three. Similarly, if I plug in value of n as four, then I I will get another value for one by lambda. And if I have a different value for for one by lambda, lambda will be different. And in this way, I can go on calculating lambdas. And all these wavelengths they are present in hydrogen atom. Or Bamer observed that all these wavelengths are present in Uh, hydrogen spectrum and he called all these wavelengths all these spectral lines with these wavelength as the bamer series or the name was given for that series as the bamer series so let me ask you this how many in principle how many lines are there in bamer series it will be there there will be in principle infinitely many lines right because for all possible values of n for every possible value of n we will get one value for lambda am i correct is it fine now let me ask you this question what is the maximum wavelength for bamer series lambda max we have on left hand side in this equation is 1 by lambda if we want lambda to be maximum that means we want 1 by lambda to be this quantity should have should be minimum so whenever 1 by lambda is minimum then we will get maximum lambda right when this term is is it should that be zero or it should have maximum value it should have maximum value so this term when assumes maximum value this 1 by n square i am talking about when it assumes the maximum possible value then this subtraction will be minimum possible when this subtraction is minimum then we have 1 by lambda as minimum and when by 1 by lambda is minimum then we will have maximum possibility for lambda are you following my uh, thought what should be value of n it should be equal to 3 okay let's say uh, it is infinity okay 
let's plug in uh, where do i do my work i'll do in this i'll do my work in this box let's consider n is equal to infinity as you're saying so what is la one by lambda it is now equal to r into one by four so what is lambda then lambda is equal to four by r, r. is it fine this is obtained when i consider n to be equal to infinity is everyone okay with this now let me consider n as zero and what will happen sorry n as three so what will happen to one by lambda now one by lambda is equal to r into one by uh, four minus one by nine right so one by lambda therefore is equal to 36 and what is lambda 36 divided by 5 r right so one of them is maximum the other one is minimum right now i was asking what is lambda max this is what we should have am i correct so when do we get maximum value of lambda then when n is infinity or when is n is 3 i i did this because some of you uh, were considering were saying that uh, n should be infinity see we want lambda maximum again i'll repeat my uh, thought process maximum lambda that means this 1 by lambda should be minimum because it is inverse right so for lambda maximum, what I need is I need this one by lambda to be minimum. Now, when will one by lambda be minimum? This R is not going to control any uh, value for one by lambda. What is going to control the value of one by lambda is this term. That means this term should be maximum possible. The second term one by n square because it is subtracted. When it is maximum, then we will get the uh, minimum value possible because it is subtracted. Now, n can be infinity or n can be equal to the minimum possible value for n is 3 and uh, maximum value it goes to infinity. And therefore, 1 by n square will be maximum when n is minimum possible. And that is when n is equal to 3. So, lambda max will occur when n is equal to 3 and minimum lambda will occur when you have to when n goes to infinity. Is it fine? What is unit of R? What is unit of uh, Rydberg's constant? It is meter inverse. And how do you arrive at that is even if you don't know these kind of dimensional analysis very important when it comes to physics because, because uh, if dimensions are correct then only that equation can be correct. Now, if you look at this relation, you should always have a practice of doing this uh, dimensional analysis. If you look at this equation, what should be the dimension on left hand side of this equation? Rydberg, Rydberg constant has uh, units of meter inverse. Its units is uh, meter inverse. But suppose we didn't know that and I want to figure out what are, what are the dimensions or what are the units of that Rydberg's constant. I can do it by using the formula that you are seeing on the screen. So I am ask, I was asking what will be what are the dimensions of the left hand side of that equation. Now what we will do is when I say dimensions, I may not give the formula of L1 T minus 1 M0 as we did. I'll say dimensions of a particular quantity is M raised to minus 1. What it means is this M is SI unit. So I'm giving the SI units and then you can guess the dimensions. Okay, that I, I may do it many times. I'll say uh, dimensions and I'll give you units but don't get confused dimensions are in general quantities uh, whether it is whether that physical quantity is length mass uh, whether it is distance uh, so if we have distance its dimension is that of what are the dimensions of left hand side of the equation that you see on the screen so lambda has dimensions of length it is if you are giving uh, SI units if you are giving wavelength in SI units then that unit would be meter so lambda has dimensions of meter therefore one by lambda dimension should be meter inverse or its units should be meter inverse am i correct on left hand side the dimensions are that of meter inverse and if this formula is correct if this equation is correct then whatever is the quantity on right hand side should have the same dimensions 
it should have unit of meter inverse if i am giving uh, units in si is it fine so now what why we are discussing it is because for we we are considering hypothetical situation where we don't know what are the dimensions of r and we want to figure them out now one by if so one thing is clear that right hand side which is this product r and the uh, angular bracket this product should have dimensions of meter inverse now what are dimensions of this term in the bracket yes it is simple number this 2 is a number it is 1 by 4 the first term is 1 by 4 and 1 by n square will assume all the terms starting from 1 by n to 0 isn't it and therefore these are simple numbers so whatever whatever are dimensions of right hand side are going to be decided by this r and since on left hand side we have meter inverse r should have dimensions of meter inverse so that the equation is dimensionally correct and in that way we can figure out the dimensions of rydberg's constant so as it happens rydberg's constant is has this value 1.097 into 10 to the power 7 meter inverse okay so this is bamer series and this this is the relation for bamer series now this wasn't the only uh series or only group of lines which was observed this we just discussed this balmer series and this balmer series satisfies this formula all the wavelengths in hydrogen atom spectrum when it satisfy this particular formula then all these wavelengths are called as balmer series where m for balmer series is equal to 2 right and the region we just considered the minimum and maximum value for lambda lambda minimum is going to be this and lambda maximum is going to be uh, 36 by 5 r i want you to do the calculation plug in the value of r and find out what is lambda minimum and what what is lambda maximum and convince yourself that no matter what value of n you consider as far as you are considering bamer series all the wavelengths in that series now fall into visible region of spectrum or visible range of spectrum and what is visible range of spectrum roughly yesterday we said that it is 4000 angstrom unit to 7000 angstrom unit right now this wasn't the only uh, group of spectral lines which satisfy this equation it was discovered at that time that that there is this lyman series also it is called as lyman series for which the same equation is satisfied the change is instead this value of m here which was 2 in case of balmer series is now is equal to 1 so for lyman series m assumes value of 1 and therefore all the wavelengths in lyman series satisfies this equation 1 by uh, lambda is r into 1 by what is m for lyman series m is equal to 1 so it is 1 minus 1 by 1 by n square okay uh, what are possible values of n now n starts from 2 3 and it goes to infinity so any value is possible any integer value is possible for n which is greater than 1 and then all these wavelengths will fall into this group of spectral lines which is called as lyman series similarly this lyman series now you can do the maths in the similar way Uh, you can find out what is maximum value of lambda and what is minimum value of lambda so in this fashion we will get the other uh, other end of lambda uh, that uh, spectral lines right so in this way i want you to calculate lambda maximum and lambda minimum for lyman series as well by plugging in values of n as 2 and infinity and then you will see that all these lines they fall in ultraviolet range of spectrum and then there are these other three spectral lines which are observed fast chain series for for which m is equal to 3 and n starts from 4 5 6 so it is any integer starting from 4 and then we have bracket series for bracket series in this equation m is equal to 4 and as you go on increasing that n you will get different wavelengths for bracket series which way and then uh, value of n goes to infinity any value starting from 5 to infinity can be assumed in this relation and you will get possible wavelengths for bracket series then you have finally this fern series so all these series were observed at that time 
and it was evident it was from this it was clear that the wavelengths which are emitted by hydrogen atom are not any wavelengths they should satisfy certain conditions they should satisfy certain relation and when that relation is satisfied then only that line can be said to be coming from hydrogen atom and these lines uh, these light which is coming from uh, hydrogen atom they give characteristics of energy of the hydrogen atom and therefore they tell us a lot of things they have information about energy of uh, electrons which are present in hydrogen atom we are discussing it because these spectra they tell us about what are going to be the values of energies of electron when they are present in atoms from observation of atomic spectra it was evident that even rutherford's model cannot be correct why not because according to rutherford's model we derived the relation we can choose any value of r we can choose any value for distance between the electron and the nucleus and we will get one value for the energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom or in any atom according to rutherford's model and there is no restriction on what value that electron can what value the energy of electron can be and therefore it it doesn't satisfy what is observed experimentally is that it is not true not all not any value of energies are possible there are only certain discrete values of energy which can be assumed by electrons in the atom and therefore it was clear it was evident from that atomic spectra one of the drawback was that it cannot explain the uh, spectral lines let's quickly review of uh, how the atomic physics um, progressed okay first there was evidences that atoms are there and one of the first models that was proposed was by thomson which was this simple plum pudding model now once this model was uh, proposed to test that experimentally rutherford performed this gold foil experiment and it, uh, the results were results of gold foil experiment were suggesting that thomson's atomic model cannot be correct we needed a different kind of atomic structure because uh, we needed a uh, atomic structure which can explain the outcomes experimental outcomes of rutherford's atomic uh, rutherford scattering experiment then to explain the observations rutherford ex uh, rutherford proposed this simple model where there is nucleus at the center and electron is revolving around that and this particular observations which were uh, observed in rutherford's experiment are satisfied by this atomic structure proposed by rutherford but then there were these uh, atomic spectra which were su uh, suggesting that uh, only certain values of energies are allowed only certain values of uh, certain values of wavelengths of light is allowed when it comes from a particular atom and therefore it was evident that even rutherford's atomic model cannot be correct and what was the next step then we needed again further modification in the atomic models and next topic of of our lecture is that bohr proposed a model based on rutherford's atomic model which satisfies or which can explain the origin of spectral lines of course bohr's atomic model is also not uh, correct as we know today but it at least at that time explained to certain extent the atomic spectra which were observed okay we will start now the discussion of bohr's atomic model in the next lecture uh, for today we will stop let's quickly summarize what we did so far uh, yesterday and today so we discuss this atomic spectra first this is the first uh, point you should note take home message these are take home messages that you see on the screen never forget these things that every element has unique spectrum no matter where you observe it when you observe hydrogen atom the spectrum of hydrogen atom is going to be unique it is not going to be same as that of oxygen so every element has unique spectrum and from a given spectrum you can identify which element it is then we saw discrete and continuous spectrum when do we have discrete spectrum whenever light is emitted by atoms then we get discrete spectrum on the other hand if we have dense uh, gas hot gas then we observe the continuous spectrum in fact every body emits electromagnetic light when i say hot it is because when it is sufficiently hot then only 
the light emitted by the body is going to be in the visible range so when do we have discrete spectrum when atoms emit light it is always discrete spectrum because energies are discrete in atom whereas when we have dense gas dense body then spectrum emitted by that is always continuous spectrum then we saw emission and absorption lines emission is basically when uh, atom de excites when it, uh, energy of the electron inside the atom is decreased the excess energy is emitted in form of photon and when we have such light we call it emission spectrum whereas observe uh, absorption spectrum is observed when light a particular wavelength is observed is absorbed by atoms and it is scattered from the light which is coming from the source and then we observe absorption lines we saw one particular special absorption lines and that are fraunhofer lines which are observed in the sun spectrum and they gave they gave an they gave us an idea about chemical composition of the sun's atmosphere then we saw spectral lines which are the lyman bamer paschen bracket and fund lyman series lies in ultraviolet range bamer series is in visible range and then these three lines paschen bracket and fund they lie in the wavelengths which are there in that spec uh, the wavelengths of the spectral line in those series lie in the infrared region and then finally this we can conclude by observing atomic spectra that energy in the atoms energy of the electrons in the atom should be discrete this was the last slide we will stop here